Hi, my name is Dave. Uh, I'm a tour guide down here at the Titan uh, Missile Museum in Saharita, Arizona. Uh, I was stationed in the Air Force back in the 70s, and when I was here, I was on a Titan missile crew. So I served in a missile silo, exactly like this one, on the other side of Tucson. Uh, we're on level three of the Control Center building. It's a three-story building. It's uh, egg-shaped, round on the top, and that's built to deflect an overhead blast away from us. This is level three. Uh, down here is our communications and our power systems. We buy power just like anybody else from Tucson Electric. But if that power goes out, we have a generator uh, that's going to kick on. But it takes 90 seconds to kick on. So we can't be without power. So we have this. Now these are rectifiers, 28 volt rectifiers. They're going to take 480 volts, turn it into 28 volt DC power, and it's going to charge our batteries. These two units are our batteries. They're full of lead acid batteries. Give us 28 volts. If the power ever goes out, these things kick on immediately, powering the gyroscopes on the missile. Uh, it's going to give us 28 volts. This is enough power to launch the missile, to even open the 760 ton door if, during a launch. Uh, this is going to give us four to six hours of power, enough time to get this missile to launch. This unit over here in the corner, that went to the guidance system, it was a generator. Uh, that was what made it so loud down here. That thing would scream. And that's going to supply all the power we need to our guidance system for that missile in case everything else goes out. Now, a few other things down here. These are all our radios. This is all our communications. Our transmitters, these are filters for our frequencies. These are all our high voltage. I showed you before, these are all uh, circuit breakers, but 480 uh, volt circuit breakers. You come down through here. This was the old air conditioning unit back in the day. This is the new unit. They put this in for people's comfort. This wasn't here back then. This door, this hatch, this is our escape hatch. Now there's only one way in and one way out and that's through the access portal. In case of an emergency, you could get out this way. It took two people to open this hatch up. Now this hatch had to survive a nuclear attack. So it was built strong, it was hard to get open. Uh, in case of an emergency down here, I think it was used once when the silo in Arkansas exploded. But most crews, thought that we would never get out this way. Uh, in case of a nuclear detonation, one that landed miles and miles away from us, it would probably cover us over in debris. Now, if, once you got this door open, it would crawl down a little 10-foot tunnel and then up 50 feet on rungs to the top. Up top, there was an open grate, but it opened out and not in, so in case that uh, nuclear detonation covered this complex over in debris, there was no way to get out. So the Air Force gave us 30 days of food and water, and any time you detect a nuclear detonation or a launch, we have these things called blast valves. They slam closed, they cut off our air supply. We're not like a submarine. We can't manufacture air down here. So we're only gonna have what's left in this three-story building. So 30 days of food, maybe 20, 22, 23 days of air left. So the crew, there's two likely outcomes for a crew. First one, the Soviets drop a nuclear detonation within a mile of this complex and we're instantly vaporized. Big giant hole in the ground where we used to exist. That's the best scenario. The other scenario, they miss by more than a mile. We survive that blast, but we're entombed down here forever. Now, the rest of the equipment down here. This is our sump. 
This is uh, where all our sewerage would come down here, and then we'd have to pump it up 50 feet in out of this place. You can see we've taken the pumps out. It's not working, so if you come visit us, there are no bathrooms down here on the tour. The restrooms are upstairs in the uh, museum before we get started. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we have more videos uh, coming online. Uh, I hope you tune in.